Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. We've got Uncle Alberic here taking on the Wizardmen. This is a replay submitted by Hero of Rome. Uh, he's up against Felcon. This is actually in a tournament. So for those of you guys who know my good friend Shadow Online Gaming, a beloved member of the community, has been running another tournament. This time it's more of an um, open style. And this is one of the games that Hero of Rome played in the tournament that he sent to me. He's up against uh, Felcon, who's obviously the reigning Eternal Challenger champion a very very good player and it's Bretonia versus Lizardman as well which is potentially a tough matchup for Bretonia let's see what they've brought we've got uh, Albrecht obviously leading the way up in the air questing knights and grail knights out on the flanks men at arms with pole arms with uh, foot squires in the center so pretty elite uh Bretonian infantry force, all things considered. Peasant bowman, a healer, no surprises there. More questing knights and companions of Quenel out to the side. For the lizardmen, we've got a source old blood, horn of Kygor on him. Yep, he's going to be juicing up these horned ones. So we got some horny horned ones here. Uh, skink cohort with javelins, with temple guard in the center. More javelins out to the sides with more temple guard. We've got uh, cold one spear riders hidden in the woods over here. So. Yeah, pretty good uh, build from Felcon. I like the use of the horned uh, the horned ones with the Horn of Kygor, although right now it looks like the Soros Old Blood is getting himself a little bit separated here, but we'll see. Companions of Quenel do reveal themselves ever so briefly here. Uh, they're trying to, I'd imagine, bait these horned ones into an unfavorable engagement, but we'll see. These peasant archers are going to pull up into range and start shooting here relatively soon. They're not going to do a whole lot of damage uh, individually, to the big scary dinosaur but I mean they do have three AP per shot with uh, full 68 unit models per unit they can do a pretty good amount of damage they also have pretty long range as well they're basically like high elf archers just without the melee stats um, so they will be able to do quite well against uh, against this source old blood here and this is a little bit over aggressive for the source old blood he's gonna charge into these questing knights questing knights actually have 48 total weapon strength they do a lot of damage and uh, with Albert coming in here, he's got that heroic killing, heroic killing blow active to make himself a much scarier combatant. Horn of Kygor, Amulet of Itzel, Standing Your Ground, all of the things being popped to the Source Old Blood. And the Horned Ones are now going to follow up here with a devastating rear charge. But that being said, a Wind Blast just rips through the Peasants? Oh, that must have been from the Skink Priest, Lord of Heavens there. I'm like, wait a minute, Bretonia doesn't have Lord of Heavens. Um, but some healing in response, uh, regrowth on those Questing Knights and uh, earth blood as well just to keep everyone healed up and look how much damage the source old blood is taking Alberic just took him to town and with the support of the questing knights as well even those horned ones aren't necessarily doing great despite the fact that they got a very favorable engagement meanwhile over here this unit of cold one spear riders just got wrecked by knights uh the uh Temple Guard are trying to hold the flank here, but the uh, Questing Knights obviously can just sort of pull away there and start to go after some routing units. The Peasant Archer is also throwing in some fire there. Albrecht's going to disengage and get back up in the air as he taken, has taken a lot of damage here. The uh, unit of Grail Knights, though, came all the way around, just crushed these Horned Ones. There are still some Horned Ones, though, that are now going to follow up and get a potential side slash rear charge. Well, it looks like most of the Grail Knights are actually facing forwards. So it may not be the best charge from the Horned Ones there, but still, a more Horned Ones in there is going to be tough for them to fight. They do good armor piercing damage. The Source Old Blood's very low on HP, though. He's going to have to be careful not to get taken out here. And it looks like the Archers are focused firing on the Horned Ones, which is very interesting. They do have a Missile Block chance, but it uh, looks like Albrecht is being chased by these Horned Ones here. Going to try and get screened out by these Peasant Mobs. This is probably the most cost-effective Peasant Mobs have ever been in their entire lives. So that's a great use of them there. That one Horned One is still able to keep up with Albrecht, though, despite everything. Um, yeah, you can see that the this is a great trade for Foot Squires. They're only, what, 700, 650 trading into Temple Guard, which is an 1,100-point unit. I mean, they will lose there, but they are going to trade super cost-effectively against Temple Guard. And over here, you can see the Lizardmen. Oh, man, did I miss it? What happened here? I see some, some dead knights. Did the knights just come through and finish off that Soros Old Blood when I wasn't looking? This very tattered unit of, like, five questing knights. Are you serious? They just killed him? No, it couldn't have been just them. Maybe the Grail Knights helped out a little bit. Maybe Albert... I didn't see, unfortunately, guys. But, uh... If it was just those five Questing Knights, then they are all Grail Knights now, officially. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, some supporting peasants gonna come in here. Try and screen out these very tattered Grail Knights who are actually routing. They should be able to come back from route, but yeah, unfortunately, the Horned Ones, Harmonic Convergence on them. They will do some good damage to the Pole Arms, but still. Enraging into Peasant Pole Arms is not the most cost-effective in the world. Uh, the t just 
throwing him around a little bit though. But uh, yeah, Temple Guard in there as well. You can see Albrecht's relatively healthy. He's pre pretty close to his healing cap, but a lot of the Lizardmen infantry has been broken up. And with the loss of leadership, the uh, leadership issues are becoming uh, very real. They're just going to be very prone to terror routing. The uh, counter charge from the Questing Knights here against the Horned Ones. Questing Knights are a very good match for the Horned Ones in terms of stats. They have, you know, comparable combat stats, comparable damage. Obviously, the Horned Ones have a little bit higher armor, a little bit less unit models, um, but very comparable units in terms of stats. And uh, obviously, the extra support here from the Peasants and from Alberic and from these other units is going to mean that Bretonia will take uh, the more favorable engagement here. So, yeah, fun stuff. Peasant Archers still secure, still continuing to fire. Honestly, just MLG units. They were pretty underrated and uh, very essential for most Bretonian builds. But yeah, those uh, the six Grail Knights going to rally, try and come back and finish off some of these routing units. But it's just a matter of time. Mostly just this Skink, uh, skink Priest and these Temple Guard holding out at this point. But uh, yeah, Questing Knights just wrecking through some light Skinks. Albrick terrorizing some Skinks as well, as do these five Grail Knights coming in on the flank. Oh man, Buddy in Pink here is getting a little bit aggressive, but... <laughs> oh man, super fun battle. Big thanks to uh, Hero of Rome for submitting that one, and congratulations to him. I mean, a rough matchup against a very good opponent. I do think Falcon made some mistakes there, getting a little bit over-aggressive with his uh, Source Old Blood, obviously. But still, an excellent, excellent battle. Very fun to watch, certainly. And nice use of Alberic in a tournament. You know, a lot of people say that Alberic is kind of crap. I don't really think so. I think he's actually pretty good, honestly, um, with, especially if you have the right abilities on him and you use him in, in the right way. But in this particular battle, I really, really like the use of Questing Knights. It's not, honestly, for whatever reason, I, I tend to not use them as much. I tend to go for the big, bigger, scarier, fancier uh, Hippogriff Knights. But there is something to be said, especially especially for uh, certain matchups like the Lizardmen. For the Questing Knights, they can do well against Saurus, they can do well against Temple Guard, they do well against Horned Ones, they do well against the big dinosaurs with their AP. So I really, really like the use of the, the Questing Knights here. I think that was excellent. 67 kills on the Grail Knights as well, did great. 69 on Men at Arms with Pole Arms, not really sure what happened there, but I guess they got into some skinks. 104 on these Foot Squires, that's pretty solid, and 30 for Uncle Alberic himself. Uh, yeah, for Felcon, again, just getting a little bit over-aggressive with the Source Old Blood. If he had kept him a little bit tighter with the Horned Ones and engaged them all together, he may have been able to win out that engagement rather than losing so hard, but because it was a little bit piecemeal, um, the Source Old Blood took way too much damage early on, and there wasn't any source of healing as well. I noticed people haven't really been bringing Revocation Crystals um, in the recent patch. I'm curious to know why, so if Felcon, if you're watching, or if another Lizardman player, uh, maybe Reptile King or one of you other guys, if you're watching, you know, Loremaster of Sotek, you guys can let me know. How come people aren't bringing Rev Crystals in this current patch? At least I haven't been seeing them nearly as much as I did before. Um... You know, it is still another source of healing, and certainly for the bigger, more expensive dinosaurs, it can be... I mean, it's not a ton of healing, but it can certainly help. So I'd be curious to know why. Um, in terms of the rest of the army, obviously Temple Guard cleaning up a ton of kills. Just not able to get onto the enemy heavy cavalry quite enough. Yeah, I really like Felcon's build here. It's tough to know, honestly, what I would change. Not a lot. Um, I might see if I can change this Soros Old Blood to, a, uh, like, a... a regular size mount like either a, a horned one or a cold one and then maybe see if I can drum up enough funds to grab like if, if you were to drop some of the javelins maybe and grab a separate feral carnosaur feral carnosaur is what 1600 the mount for this guy's 11 1100 I want to say for the for the the uh, old blood so the reason that I would say you may want to separate them is just to try and separate targets oh it's only 900 for him for the Carnosaur. Maybe it's not worth it. That's actually quite a bit cheaper than uh, the Feral Carnosaur. And I'm actually just curious. Yeah, this guy's going to be pretty expensive. But, um, I mean, if you were to take him on the Horned one, that's I guess that's not that much of a difference in cost. It'd be pretty hard to afford the Feral, uh, the feral Carnosaur. But the reason that I would want to separate them is to just separate targets. You could keep the Source Old Blood with your Horned Ones. Or maybe you even cut the Horned Ones down to Cold One Spear Riders. That would give you the extra funds. What did he have? Four of those, two Temple Guards, some Skink Cohorts. Let's grab like five Skink Cohorts. Something like this. Um, maybe you grab a unit of Croxigors as well. You could grab a Rev Crystal. It's just another Armored Dino. Um, doesn't do the most damage, but it does have healing. Again, curious to know your guys' thoughts as to why people haven't been bringing those. This, 
This army also doesn't have a caster, so we definitely want to grab a Skink Priest, Lord of Heavens. Roiling Skies is going to be pretty good. Harmonic Convergence and Wind Blast. Curse of Midnight Wind also can be pretty solid, but because we're so tight on cost, yeah, we might have to cut some other abilities here. And I don't even have the Horn of Kygor yet, so I may need to do some adjusting here <laughs> for this particular type of build. Maybe even cut some of these Spear Riders down to just regular Cold One Riders, which, I mean, obviously they don't have the Anti-Large, so they're going to be a little bit tougher uh, to use, but that will give us the extra points we need to sort of fill out the abilities that we want here. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below, though. Um, maybe you would just go with a completely different build than this and forsake the heavy cavalry and just go heavy dinos. Maybe you bring a couple of stegodons or something. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.